Hello, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and welcome to episode 64 of my Logic Pro 10 video tutorial series. In this episode, we're going to talk about compressing the guitar and bass in our session, and different ways to compress guitar based on the uh, type of playing is involved, uh, as well as uh, the overdrive setting or the lack of overdrive. Uh, one thing I just want to mention real quick before I get into this is that um, this video is in stereo now. Um, in the pr prior five parts of this mixing mini series, for whatever reason, there was some weird uh, bus glitch that was sending the audio from the session over to the screen capture in multi mono instead of in stereo. So I apologize for that, and thank you, YouTube, for. Uh, pointing that out, several people messaged me and, and commented and said that, hey, I think this video's in, in mono, and sure enough, you guys were right, so it was just a, it was a bus, it was a weird bus glitch, I'm not sure why, why it happened, but I've resolved the issue now, so this will be in stereo. So just so you can hear some of the stereo effects, uh, especially in the guitar, since we're working with guitar today, let me just play a bit of the verse and the pre-chorus. <laughs> So yeah, that sounds a lot better, and a lot of people were probably wondering in, in episode one, or the, the first part of the mixing series, I should say, uh, why when I panned the guitars, I wasn't, you weren't hearing any of the stereo effects, and that's why, it was because of that weird bus glitch. So let's just solo out the guitar, uh, the gu I'm just going to solo out the rhythm guitar uh, in the left channel, uh, and just as a reminder, the, the guitar in the left channel is almost the same as in the right channel, they're both rhythm guitar parts. Um, I'm going to compress just the left, and then I'll just copy the setting over to the right. Um, with these guitar parts, we're working with sort of, not, I wouldn't call it heavy overdrive, but a, a bit of overdrive. Um, so it's it's certainly not clean. Um, so there, there's a different way to compress sort of overdriven guitar, uh, distorted guitar tones, and versus, you know, uh, compressing, say, a clean guitar tone for reggae or jazz or even sort of like a bit of a crunch, you know. Um, if you look at, uh, if you look at the waveform here, you'll see that there's there's a lot of sort of dips and peaks to it. And that's because the actual, uh, you know, the actual tone here is actually the clean signal of the guitar because as I mentioned earlier, we're actually using a guitar amp plug-in. So that's what's causing the, um, that's what's causing the overdrive. Um, if I were actually to maybe take out a little section here and actually render this to audio, I'm just going to press Control B to uh, bounce in place. Um, you'll actually see that the the waveform is far less um, far less you know peaky you know than than the other one. There's it's far more uh, uniform, and that's just due to all the fuzz from the distortion. Any amped guitar sound is going to be like that as well. So. Um, with heavy overdrive, you're not really dealing with transient heavy material, even if the original uh, dry recording looks like that. So we don't really want to use um, much of an attack time, if any, um, because that's basically what that's going to do is it's going to um, let a little bit of the punch through just at certain spots, but not just uh, not on every note. And you'll end up with these sort of pops in the guitar part where the where the attack comes through and then quickly comes out. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and throw the, uh, the compressor on this guitar track here. Uh, by itself, again, sounds like this. So rather than adding punch to this like we do with the drums, I want to add heft to it. So I'm going to keep the attack time all the way down. Uh, I'm going to keep I'll pull the release up toward the middle here. I'm gonna pull the ratio up a bit, at least four, at least four to one, maybe five or six to one even. Um, pull the threshold down, and again, I'm just gonna ear it here. I'm just gonna press play and ear it.
Yeah, I'm just looking for a setting that is going to give us heft, but at the same time isn't going to start to sound woofy. Um, so let me go. So let me go ahead and pull the the gain up. I'm actually going to turn the limiter off because I'm not really going to need it. The only problem I'm really running into is the part where um, the guitar is playing sort of that dun 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 dun, the more sort of punchy crunch part. Um, I really could use a different attack and release setting for that that part than where the the, the heavy chords come in. Um, I'm gonna sort of put this on like roughly in the 70s, the release time. What I'll probably end up doing later when we start talking about automation is I'm gonna come in here and actually automate. Uh, the attack and release time just for that one spot so I can get more of a punchy crunch on the on the verse and then the pre-chorus get more of sort of the rich full hefty sounding um, um, guitar, uh, hard guitar parts um, so I'm going to keep it there I'm going to keep it on RMS not peak but one last thing I am going to do is I'm going to come down to my additional parameters here and turn the hard output distortion on without it it sounds like this <laughs> With it, you can see we're getting a bit more of a, a brighter sound out of it. Um, I'm just going to hold Option and duplicate this over to my right guitar. Let's see what both of these sound like together now. What I did there is I pulled the release all the way down. It's just there's a section in here. You can really hear, it, really hear it start ducking. I think it's on this note here. Yeah, we're still getting a little more, a bit more ducking. Like I said, when we get into um, when we get into automation, I'll probably come back and and automate. Uh, the release times uh, for the uh, for the verse a bit differently than I do uh, uh, do the rest. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the knee up here too. Now, if we were compressing, say, like clean guitar, that's a little more punchy, maybe for reggae or, or jazz or something like that, where you want sort of a a bit of the punch of like clean uh, to get through, or just maybe a little bit of crunch. Um, you're gonna want to make sure you open up the attack time a bit. That's gonna let some of the transients through. Um, the, again, the only reason why we're not really playing with the attack time here is it just, we don't need it. There really is no transient material uh, to worry about here. So I'm pulling it all the way down. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to do one more thing. I'm second guessing myself here, as will you. 
on the uh, the compressor and the rhythm guitar, I'm going to pull the ratio down a bit. I'm just getting some pumping in there that I don't like, some sort of woofy, woofy sounds. Pull the release up just a hair. Um, let's copy that over. I like it on the leads, but I'm not a big fan of. I wasn't a big fan of it on the the rhythm there. Yeah, that's a lot better. Uh, let's go to our bass now. Bass is. Um, Bass can be a little tricky because um, bass, especially if you're doing DI bass, it's going to be really sort of dynamically spread all over the place. You're going to have really sort of tall peaks and really um, low uh, dips. So usually with rock and roll bass, I try to, it's one of the very few instruments I do this with, but I try to sort of flatten the bass uh, intentionally. Um, and so with the bass... I'm going to go with like a really, really high ratio, like 20 to 1. Um, I'm going to let some of the some of the attack through, not uh, not much. I just want to let a, a bit of the of the punch of each note to come through. Pull the release time to about the middle. Um, again, keep it on RMS. Let's pull the threshold way down because we really want to flatten this and pull the gain way up. You hear when I when I pull the attack up, you get more of a sort of like a a, a punch to it. Um, I want some of that, but not not that much. So I'm going to keep it about six or seven milliseconds. Now, one thing uh, the bass will really benefit from is from the vintage VCA circuit. You can try the Opto as well, but the vintage ones tend to colorize the tone a bit more, which is going to give us a warmer sound, a bit more of mid-range. Um, that's one of sort of the key the key things to bass guitars. If you really want to actually hear it in the mix a bit and have it support the guitar better, um, you want to have some of the mid-range come through, not just the bass uh, come through. So we could go into our EQ as well and maybe boost some of these mid-low frequencies, but we already have some. It's going to kind of Keep them where they are. Yeah, it's even distorting a little bit. So it's giving we're getting a little bit of overdrive from pulling that, uh, the output distortion, putting that on hard, um, and then also pulling the gain up higher, and also using the, the vintage VCA circuit. These are all good things for bass, you know? I mean, depending on the amount of, of overdrive you want on it, you know, you may have to add something else in addition to this, uh, or use an amp and, you know, intentionally distort the amp. But here, I, this is really the sound I'm, I want. I want a bit more mid-range, and that sort of tube emulating distortion here is pulling up some of the the mid low range overtones that are going to bring out some some of the tone in the bass and not so much of just the fundamental. So let's hear what all the guitars sound like. Actually, let's just turn everything on uh, except for vocals, of course. I'm still we're still working with the rhythm section here. So let's just go back to our verse. <laughs> Whoops. Oh, this is what happens when you try to uh, <laughs> when you try to run a session while you're uh, uh, while you're also doing a screen capture and also recording audio. Let me make sure my uh, make sure my buffer size is turned all the way up. I'm kind of glad this happened because uh, whoops, I'm in the wrong preferences, logic preferences. Um, I'm kind of glad this happened because uh, yeah, this this very well might happen to you. And and when you're mixing, you want to make sure that the buffer size is set as high as possible. It's going to keep things like that from happening. Frankly, with everything I've got going on, I'm surprised uh, surprised that didn't happen earlier. So so let's just wait for this to load. 
And then we'll give this one more listen. Uh, that guitar solo, I'm going to want to compress as well. Um, so I'm just going to throw that same, uh, same compression on the guitar solo. Let's give this a listen here. I'm sorry, Logic. I'm making you work too hard. sounds so I'm gonna stick with that um, now one of the things I am gonna do later and we'll, we'll talk about this in the next video is I'm gonna start grouping instruments together so all of my guitars are and well, my rhythm guitars are gonna go to an aux track the leads are gonna go to an aux track um, all the drums are gonna go to an aux track so there's actually still an additional level of compression and limiting that I might throw on there um, just to sort of fatten it up just a bit more and just sort of glue things together but we'll talk about that in another video so I may come back to these these uh, these tracks and maybe pull down the compression amount a bit, um, just because I don't want to overdo it. But I do sort of want to glue them uh, glue them together a bit with some bus compression. So, all right. So that wraps up this video. Uh, just keep in mind that you can always purchase this session if you want to work along with me, uh, and I will post a link to that in the video description below. So once again, I hope you enjoyed the video, and thanks for watching.